Hi guys. So, um, the technique of slapping, thumping and popping, or thumping and plucking as it's sometimes known, uh, is a great technique that we can use on the bass to add a, uh, a sort of percussive element to our playing. Now, disclaimer at the beginning of this video, it's a technique that you really ought to use sparingly. It sounds great, it looks great, it's flashy and everything, but overused, it can just become a bit too much, and it's not really always appropriate for every sort of style of music that we play. Um, so it's just something to use, you know, when it's the right time to slap. Okay, so that aside, um, we'll have a look at the technique today uh, and hopefully get you started on uh, some styles of slap to play. So those are two basic elements of slap and sort of four overall elements that you need to, to learn. The first and the probably the trickiest to learn is just the slap itself. Now what you want to do, there are two ways to do it. I sort of hold my thumb in about this position, sort of a, a m roughly a 45 degree angle. There's some that hold it much, much um, sort of higher angle and some that hold it a much lower angle. Um, but you just got to find where that's sort of comfortable for you. I find it about there um, and holding the thumb just over the end of the fretboard here. Now the slap itself, you want to hit the string and then bounce the thumb off fairly quickly so you get that slap and the ring of the string. Because if you hold your thumb down, all you get is a dead note. So you want to bounce off. So, you know, you just want to get used to that. Just play around whatever, a scale or whatever. To get that uh, that technique working. Now, the other element is, the main element, is the pop. Now, this is sort of an exaggeration of our normal plucking style, where you actually hook the, th the finger underneath the string a bit more and pull the string out. Rather than just plucking over the string, you actually pull it away from the fretboard and release it. Now, you don't want to get too far under there because you won't get your finger out again. So it's a sort of edge of the finger, or roughly that sort of angle, pulling out. This is where this sort of technique is a bit more limited because you're more likely to get your finger trapped underneath. So if you're sort of more sideways on, you can just pull with the edge of your finger. So um, the second sort of part to, to practice the um, slap technique um, is maybe sort of pick an octave and do those together. It's quite useful to point out at this point that when you're doing a slap and a pop, then the motion should be one fluid motion rather than a slap and then a pop. You should slap and as you're coming away from the slap, bring out the pop. tend to favor my index finger for the pop. Um, some people prefer, favor their middle finger uh, and occasionally somebody people will favor their index on if you're popping on the D string and their uh, middle finger if you're popping on the G string. Again that's a personal preference. I don't think there's any major advantage in any particular way so you just got to find out what um, works for you best. Now they're the two main elements of slap. There, I mentioned there are four overall. Um, and this is sort of to get into the more advanced techniques of slap is um, the muted um, slap with the fretting hand. That's the sound where we're going for. So this is to get into like really heavy rhythmic um, versions of slap. Um, and it's quite tricky. I'm, I, I took a long time to get used to getting a dead note out of there rather than fretting and ringing. So it's, you've got to slap on with your hand, but not a actually fret any note. So it's like aiming for a dead note with your fretting hand. Um, and, uh, you know, that's quite tricky. So you just got to find a way of bouncing on the string, but not actually fretting down. You don't want to hit too hard and sound a note there. Um, and where that comes in is when you're going for um, a rhythmic line um, and you can play something like this. So if you have a slap, a dead note with the fretting hand, a dead note with the the thump, 
and then a pop. And you can start getting those um, fast runs together. Um, that in itself isn't you know particularly useful, but then you can start stringing those together um, and start getting more sort of running lines. Or something. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Um, Something that was uh, really useful when I was starting out, I was trying to get that coordination of the two hands together, and I couldn't really understand how to, to do it. Um, and the best description I had was like tapping your uh, hands on your knees. Getting that rhythm coordination between the two hands. Once I got that sort of principle down of using the two hands together, that sort of thing started to become a bit more natural um, and become much more easy. Um, so that's it really. I mean, there's a lot of resources around slap bass out there on the web um, and a lot of guys that do like really amazing stuff that is beyond my capabilities, um, I'll freely admit. Um, and as a few guys I would point you in the direction of if you're looking to learn this sort of stuff um, and three really main different sort of styles for that whole sort of rhythmic running thing. Um, check out a guy called uh, Mark King, played in a band called Level 42 in the 80s, and they're still going uh, now, um, and their bass lines are all about that kind of stuff. There's loads and loads of like really heavy rhythmic stuff going on there, and that's really impressive. Um, for a more sort of groove-based thing, my guy's always been Marcus Miller. Um, it's quite heavy in the jazz scene, but also a um, big session player back in the day. Um, and he had um, much more old school kind of um, stuff. Larry Graham as well. He's one of the pioneers of slap bass, um, and it's much more sort of um, sort of uh, I don't know groove stuff like. Um, or something. That's just um, you know, a quick phrase. Um, but um, yeah, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then sort of more on the rock scene, um, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers kind of took that sort of funky slap bass thing and added it to uh, a punk aggression um, and then sort of really did his own thing with it. Um, uh, example of uh, his kind of thing uh, was more like what I was doing in the beginning really there. Um, just trying to think of some of his bass lines. <laughs> been a long time since I played those ones um, but yeah so that really heavy heavy going um, but for some simpler stuff is actually really good for starting out so listen to the Chili Peppers version of um, Higher Ground by Stevie Wonder so a nice easy octave run there to, to get you into the feel um, or one of their later ones um, Air, Airplane I should have checked this beforehand, um, but um, on one hot minute. Um, again, quite an easy run, but a good one to learn to just sort of get the technique under your hands. Um, so that's it really, guys. Um, so um, I want to look at some more advanced techniques in the coming videos, um, but this one's really something to, to work on for quite a while. It takes us quite a while to develop a slap sound. A lot of the stuff I did really early on when I was playing, I tried to slap and it wasn't great. And listening back, it would have been a lot better if I hadn't. So really make sure you've got the technique under your under your belt well before you use it out in public. Um, or definitely on recordings. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's some examples. Go listen to um, some examples of slap bass out there and um, get it under your belt. <laughs>